Glory to God, everyone. Um, I want to open up to Job 33, 14. It says, For God speaks once, yet twice, yet a man perceives it not. So, I was kind of thinking to myself, what does this verse mean? Is it like a literal uh, voice? Or is it more of a voice that God speaks to your heart? But then later on, it says in 15, He speaks in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbering upon the bed. So it's in various ways that God could speak to us. In sleep, in a vision, the voice of God like God spoke to Moses, or it could be maybe to your heart. Or maybe it's through someone in your life that God speaks to you through. I want to talk about a story one time when I was at camp. A lot of you guys know this story, but it was four or five years ago, and I don't remember which camp it was, but I remember, I think God spoke to me through my mom. And she said, when before I was going to camp, she said, Oleg, I want you to go to prayer in the morning, or I want you to go to prayer at night. And I said, I remember the reply, and I was just, the way a t typical teenager was, I said, God, Mom, no, I want to get my sleep, and I want to go to the bonfires that were going on at that time. And looking back, and I, my soul, um, it judges me for saying that, but I feel like that was my waking call in my life. Because that time, that time during camp, I remember we were going through activities and we were doing this one activity when we were going, bringing a tire up on a, a, a post or something. But some guy that was on top, he was trying to get the tire, he had a branch and he kind of threw it down and it hit my head and it split it. And blood was pouring down my face and I, I, I went into shock. A lot of people said it was and for me not to worry that it would heal and that everything would be fine, but for me, I was in shock. Not because of the blood, but because I knew that I disobeyed the voice of God. And the whole time, the whole time when I was getting my head healed up, I kept thinking to myself, I, I need to go to church, I need to go to prayer. But they were pulling me away, and I'm like, no, I have to go to prayer. And I, rem I know that... that that was God's awakening call in my life. But I was not able to go to prayer, but I went to the hospital and I got stitches and they found a little piece of wood in my scalp. They said if I had not stitched it up, that I would have either gone mentally ill or I would have probably even went to, became deceased. So Slava Bohu that I'm standing before you guys today. But before I want to start, I want to open up to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 22, 21 with everyone. This is God, and he's saying this to the house of Judah through the prophet Jeremiah. He says, I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou said, I will not hear. This has been thy manner from thy youth, that thou do not obey my voice. And I, I first thought, I, I thought prosperity was, like, I don't know why, but I thought it was in thy, in thy um, something like, something that's bad that's going on in our life. But no, prosperity is defined as prosperous, or in other terms, it means being successful, wealthy, or comfortable in your life. And I thought to myself, how is prosperity in our life? How is this comfort? How is it keeping us away from getting to know Jesus Christ or to he for hearing God's voice, because it says, God said, I speak to you. I always speak to you, but you choose not to hear. You say, I will not hear because I am comfortable in my life, because I, am, I do things in my life that are for my benefit, not for God's benefit, but for my own benefit. So I started to think of, of myself. Am I, was I living, or are we living in comfort? Are we living for our own benefit, or are we living to hear God's voice in our life, what He has to say to us? I am not here to condemn or to show how success or comfort in our life and our life can cause us to fall away from Jesus. But I want to first open up 
to Matthew 19 with everyone. Every, a lot of you guys know this story. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this story. But I want to read it and I want everyone to look at the words carefully. To think about every single word because this, this, this story was in the Bible for a reason. And we need to look at it and to see why it was written. It's nine, uh, Matthew 19.16. I'm going to read, but please bear with every verse that I say. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I have may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt not do murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear fault with witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And 1920, Matthew 1920, if everyone looks at this verse, the young man said unto him, All these things I have kept from thy youth up, what lack I yet? So what that man said, he says, I have kept everything from thy youth up. And this is the same thing God said unto Jeremiah to the house of Judah. He said, you, you live in prosperity because you, you do not hear my voice because you live in prosperity. So this man, this young man, he said, I have kept all the commandments, but what have I yet to do? And the same thing God said unto Jeremiah to the house of Judah. He said, you are in prosperity because of your comfort, because of your way of life. You choose not to hear my voice. You choose, maybe you hear it, but maybe you choose not to listen to it. And then later on, we see in verse 21, Jesus says unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He chose not to listen to the voice of Jesus because he was comfortable in his life. Maybe with me too, when I went to camp, maybe I was comfortable in my own life that I chose not to listen to God's voice. I want to turn back to Jeremiah. Uh, I want to turn back to Jeremiah again with everyone, but this time to Jeremiah 22, verse 29. This is what God says to Jeremiah. He says, "Oh, earth, earth, earth." He says it three times. He says, earth, earth, earth. Like he wants us to hear what he's saying. He says, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. And he says, thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of God and ruling any more in Judah. So God is saying, he's warning of the prosperity that is going on. And he's saying, because you choose not to hear my voice, because you choose to ignore it, your seed will not flourish anymore. So this, and it's very important in our life to think about this too. In what ways are we living, are we living a comfortable life or are we choosing to hear the voice of God, what God has to say to us? Then it says, Jesus says in Matthew 19, 28, he says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of glory. You shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He said this to his disciples who abandoned everything in their life to pursue after Jesus and to listen to Jesus' voice. Then he says, Jesus says, And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. Um, so according to this gospel recount, if you truly look into the words of Jesus Christ, you can see how prosperity, prosperity in our life could lead us to forgetting to hear the voice of God or us to ignore it. Just like the rich man did with Jesus. On the other hand, imagine living a life where you could truly say that I listen to the Spirit. You could say, Spirit, lead me and I will follow. Like the Bible verse, it says, for I live by faith and not by sight. I want to continue my sermon with keeping all of this in mind to just set the foundation on my sermon. 
the foundation. I want I wanted to set the foundation because early on, earlier on, it says in Jeremiah 22, it says, "Thou how, thy house does not prosper." He said this to the house of Judah. He says it does not prosper. So I wanted to set a foundation, a foundation for my sermon, a foundation on how to get a relationship or have not a relationship, but to truly have Christ live in you. That was the foundation because if your house is not prosper, that means your foundation is not right. So that is what was God was saying unto Jeremiah. He says, your foundation is not right. He says, you do not listen to my voice because your foundation is not right. So I will break my sermon into three points that will follow each other. The first point I will talk about is creation. The second point I will talk about is fellowship. And the third point I will talk about is formation. Creation, fellowship, and formation. These all follow each other. But first, before I do this, I want to turn to Colossians. Colossians 1.27. To introduce the theme, or the other theme was Galatians 2.20, but this is another theme. That I wanted to say that follows Galatians 2.20 and talks about the same type of topic. It says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of glory of this mystery upon the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So it says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of glory, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So he's saying, Unto other people, unto through you, you will, they, it will be revealed, the riches of glory, the, the mystery among the Gentiles. It will be revealed through you. Through Christ living in you, it will be revealed through you. Imagine living your life in such a way that through you, it would be revealed. Everything, all of this that was just said. That like if you, Christ lives in you, you could truly be the salt of the earth, the light of the earth. We must understand that we could only accomplish us being the salt of the earth, the light of the earth, through Christ living inside of us. I want to talk about Acts 11. If all of you guys turn there with me, please. Acts 11, 22. I'm going to read down to verse 26. 26. Acts 20, 11, 22 to 26. Then tidings of this came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that should go as far as Antioch. And who when he came he had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with the purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when they found him, he brought him into Antioch. And they came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and thought much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I feel like today maybe you, maybe not us, but other people in life, they might go around calling themselves Christians. But the key word I want to say here is that they, they were called Christians. They did not call themselves Christians, but they were called Christians because of the way they acted. It said Barnabas was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and much people were added unto the Lord because of Barnabas. So I wanted to think about this, dwell on this verse. They were first called Christians because of the way they acted, the way they truly lived out how Christ lived in them. Because Christ lived inside of them, they were called Christians. Christian means Christ-like. Christian means to be like Christ, to have Christ live inside of you. So in what ways are we, are we living out the way we are called to be Christians? Are we calling ourselves Christians? Or can other people look at you and say, he is a Christian? Just like they did with the disciples in Antioch. That's something to think about. So I wanted to lay the, so once, so because the foundation is laid now, I want to first speak about the first point that I made. The first point was creation. I want to open up to Genesis 127 with everyone. In order to understand how to have Christ live inside of us, I want to lay a foundation on where, how God created us in the first place. In Genesis 127, it says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him. Male and female, he created them. It is said that God made man in his own man image. So in essence, the purpose of our life is to bear the divine image that was prepared for us in the beginning. 
And Jesus was the perfect example of this image that God created us to be. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed, it was the divine image that God created us to be, was to be like Jesus Christ. As it says in John 1.14, it says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word that God first made, it was, it was made flesh and it dwelt among us. So this is the foundation of how God created us in the first place. It was in His own image to be like Jesus Christ. When God sent Jesus, His only Son, to die for our sins, He created us in His own image. So it makes me think, how are we trying to accomplish this in our life? Are we living out the way God created Jesus and to created us to actually be in the first place? Are we living this out? The second point I want to talk about is fellowship. The second point is that we need fellowship in our life. A, bit of, uh, a lot of scripture, it talks about this, about having fellowship with one another, about having fellowship with Jesus Christ. In John 15, 15, 4, Jesus states clearly, he says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except, except it abide in the vine. No more can you unless you abide in me. So he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. This is a two-way street. This is Jesus first saying, he says, abide in me and then I will abide in you. Jesus will abide in us. He will live in us. This verse magnifies how important it is to restore our fellowship and relationship with Christ. Because Christ clearly says, he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. There are a lot more verses about this, but this is the backbone. This is the backbone of how we should live out our Christian life, is to abide in Jesus Christ. To abide in him and he will abide in us. He will live, if we live out how Jesus lived, he will live in us. And the last point, formation. Having Christ dwell among you may sometimes be a lifelong process. This does not come overnight. This comes over time sometimes. This is a lifelong process, and after we know the cre how we were created to be in the first place, after we have fellowship in our life with Jesus Christ, we have to form, a, form this Christ divine image in our own life. This comes through a life a process. Sometimes it might not come right away, but it, it does sometimes. As Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2.20, he says, It is not I who lives, but Christ that lives in me. So naturally, Apostle Paul would want us to have this Christ-like image in our own selves as well. In Galatians 4.19, Galatians 4.19, he talks about how much, how much he travails. How much, how much he cries, how much he prays for the Galatians, for the church of Galatians, for Christ to be formed inside of us. I want to open up to Galatians 4, um, 4, 7, 4, 19. So all of us could understand where, what, was, what Apostle Paul was saying to the church of Galatians. He says, my little children of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. Until Christ be formed in you. This is where formation comes from. You might have the fellowship. You might know that you were created. You were born. You were born and you were created in God's image. And lastly, it's the formation process that needs to come through. We in order for, for formation, for the formation to finally come through in our life, we have to know what we need in our life for this formation to come through in our life, for it to actually form. So I want to read from 1 John 4.12. 1 John 4.12 it says, no man has seen God at any time, but if we love one another, God dwells in us and His love is perfected in us. So the first condition for us to have this Christ-like image formed in us is for us to love, to love, to have unity amongst each other, to love one another, to show this love to other people. 
to show this Christ-like image of us that we want to show through this light, to be a salt on the earth, to be a light on the earth, in order for us to show love to one another. It has, this needs to be met. And the other condition that needs to be, to be met is 1 John 3, 24. It says, And he that keeps his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given in us. So first thing is that we need love towards one another. And secondly, we need to keep his commandments. For love covers a multitude of sins and keeping his commandments is doing what he designed for us to do. To live out his will for us and in, in his, that he made for us. So if we keep his commandments, if we love one another, formation of Christ-like image can form in us. And we could be like the way he destined us to be. So the three points that I talked about was creation. And the second point was fellowship. And the third point was formation. If we keep these in mind, we could truly come to the last, the last verse that we talked about in the beginning of church, which, which was Galatians 2.20, the topic of today's service. Galatians 2.20, it says... I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Glory, glory to God. Slava Bohu. In order for us to fully comprehend how to have Christ live in, Christ live in us, it doesn't come right away it comes through a lot of sacrifice in our life sacrificing our own desires sacrificing our comfort in our life sacrificing our prosperity to live as Christ to know that God created us in his image and that we should have this fellowship with him and that our, the, the formation will come through the formation will come when we show love to one another the formation will come when we keep his commandments I want us to keep all of this in mind and to know that in order, if we want, if we, when we call ourselves Christians, so we could say through our heart, so we could have other people be like, he's a Christian, he's a Christian, he's a Christ-like person, just like they did in Antioch. They did not call themselves Christians, they were called Christians. When we keep all this in mind, we could have this Christ-like image form in us. And I'm speaking to myself too, I'm speaking to all of us. I'm not speaking and condemning, but I'm speaking through love. I'm speaking through love and compassion towards everyone. If we keep all of this in mind, we could have this Christ-like image form in us. And I want us all to pray right now and to give God glory and to think about the words that God opened up to me. Let's all give glory to God. Amen.